isn't a Jack Benny album of familiar jokes, Kitty. <laughs> Show with Fred Guest, Arthur Treacher, Portland Hopper, Minerva Pius as Mrs. Nussbaum, Alan Reed as Falstaff Openshaw, Parker Fenley as Titus Moody, the DeMarco Sisters, and Al Goodman and his orchestra. And until I show up as Senator Claghorn, my name is Kenny Delmar. Today, ladies and gentlemen, most radio programs are giving things away. This program is different. We give you nothing. And to prove it, here he is, Fred Allen. Thank you. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And Kenny, you're right about radio programs giving things away. You know, the only trouble is that generally the winners get the wrong thing. What do you mean? Well, a leading question if I have ever heard one. <laughs> well, I shall tell you what I mean, Kenneth. Last week on a program, let me see, that program, if you can lift it, take it away. No, that was another one. Uh, this was the following day. Oh, this program is called Musician for a Day. Now, on this program, an old lady, 89 years of age, won a set of bagpipes. Now, the poor old lady hasn't got wind enough to cool a demi-task. <laughs> What can she do with the bagpipe? That is my question. Oh, oh. You're, you're really making this up, Fred. Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, if I am lying, may you get a line with a laugh in it some night. <laughs> I heard another program, a uh, program, Morons Are Funny, with some guy, Ralph Winkletter, I think his name is. And a man came to the microphone, Mr. Tom Pitt Nishball. I caught the name. And Mr. he missed his question, and they hit him right in the face with a lemon meringue pie. Then they gave him a Gruen watch. Well, Mr. Nishball got a watch, didn't he? Yes, but for two weeks, Mr. Nishball had meringue in his eye and couldn't see what time it was. So you see, Kenny, if you win a wheelbarrow... Well, partner. You're just in time, Portland. Kenny and I are talking about radio programs giving things away. Mama won 2,000 cakes of soap and a sponge on the radio. Oh, really? In a contest, was mm -hmm. it? I use Oh Boy Soap Because. Oh Boy Soap Because. What was your mother's winning answer? Mama wrote, I use Oh Boy Soap Because I'm dirty. <laughs> She had 23 words left over, huh? Well, tell me, what's new this week, Portland? Did you read that some company wants to put music in the subway train? Music, that's fine. That'll be like riding to work in a jukebox, won't it? If they played the Star Spangled Banner in the subway, women might be able to get seats. Well, how could they get the Star Spangled Banner? Lucy Monroe will not sing in the subway. <laughs> The subway could have its own song. Subway songs? What song? BMT for two. BMT for two. <laughs> Would you love me at Penn Station as you did at Union Square? <laughs> She'll be coming on the shuttle when she comes. I, I, I don't think it's going to work out, Portland. Why not? Well, the subway is losing money. Now, if it needs music, the mayor will be glad to go down in the subway and sing the blues. <laughs> and speaking of business... Speaking of business, we have no business here. You know, it's time we were getting down to Alan's Alley. What is your question tonight? Do you believe in hobbies? And if you do, what is your hobby? Shall we go? As Winkin said to Blinken, why not? <laughs> Ah, here we are back in Allen's Alley, Portland. Ah, that goody. Well, the Senate is in all right. His hexing kid and voodoo mess jacket are here on the front veranda, see? Well, let's knock. Somebody, I say, somebody knock. Yes, I... Claghorn's the name, Senator Claghorn, that is. I know, you're from the South. I've been in the house all day. I refuse to come out. Why? The wind was blowing from the north. Now... <laughs> I do is the Charleston. Now, look. I, I never go to the store club, son. Why not? That building's his first name is Sherman. Now, wait. <laughs> wait a Sherman. minute. When I say that name, I'll rinse my mouth out. <laughs> Tell me, Senator. Confidentially. 
Do you have a hobby? My only hobby is home movies. Oh, you have different pictures? Only one picture, son. Gone with the wind. <laughs> Your hobby is showing the same picture over and over? Only one scene. One scene? Where Grant takes Richmond. I see. <laughs> I run the film backwards, son. You mean... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just sit there and watch Richmond taking Grant. Come on, son. Well, the senator probably thinks the girl in Gone with the Wind is O'Hara Scarlet. Well, I see Mr. Moody's light is on. Howdy, bub. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Moody, have you a hobby? Oh, I've had lots of hobbies. I've been on the radio twice. Oh, with, uh, with your hobbies? Yeah. First time I went to New York with 200 pounds of putty. 200 pounds of putty, huh? Uh, saving putty was my hobby. Well, uh... <laughs> what did you do on the air? I just spoke my name, said the putty was mine. I see. <laughs> Fella, fella that was running the program, he felt my putty and he says, no hard feelings and thank you, Miss Moody. Thank you. <laughs> well, the audience stomped and whistled. They thought it was putty good. <laughs> oh, Mr. Moody. I picked up my putty and come home. Well, you've had, since this putty episode, you've had other hobbies since? Oh, yes. One time I was collecting deer ends. Deer ends? Yeah. Everybody was mounting deer heads. I started collecting what was left over. Oh! <laughs> I, uh, I had 20 deer ends mounted on the walls. 20, 20 deer ends. When I opened the door... Yes? Seemed like I was overtaking a herd. <laughs> what, uh, what is your latest hobby? Oh, I give up hobbies. Why? Last hobby I had was giving moose calls. Well, why have you given up your moose call? Well, one morning at daybreak, I went up to the top of the hill. I see. Put on an old fur coat and a fur cap. Mm hmm. Go down on all fours. Yeah. I give out with a moose call. Uh huh. Big she moose come over the hill running. Uh huh. She nuzzled up to me and started licking my fur cap. The moose was in love with you, huh? Well, what did you do? Well, I got up and explained matters as best I could. And? A big tear come into her eye. And the moose? She turned and walked away. And that's why you've given up your hobby of moose calls? Yeah, but somewhere in them hills tonight... Yes? There's a moose with a broken heart. So long, Bob. So long. Well, I never suspected that Mr. Moody was a lady killer. Oh, well, let's try this next door. No. Ah, oh, Mrs. Nussbaum. You were expecting maybe Moronica Lake. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. N., do you have a hobby? Since a little girl, cooking is by me a hobby. Ah, oh, you like to cook, huh? From all kinds of different magazines, I'm cutting recipes. <laughs> different dishes, huh? From Health Magazine, I'm making mock pot roast. Mock pot roast? You are mixing two pounds soybeans with the yolks of two eggplants. Oh, that does it. Well, how does this, uh, how does this mock pot roast taste? It is all mock and no pot roast. <laughs> what other magazine recipes have you tried? I'm making nature fish chowder. What is that? All kinds of fish, two quarts milk, and for luck, I'm throwing in two horseshoe crabs. Two horseshoe crabs for luck. Well, that sounds good. On top, I'm putting two station eyes. Well, what magazine had this recipe, a chowder with two eyes? Look. Oh, look. <laughs> From Reader's Digest, I'm making a recipe. Oh, from Reader's Digest. It is one pinch flour, two drops water, uh-huh. three grains sugar, one symbol Crisco, also half a raisin. You, uh, you bake this? It is coming out a cookie. Oh. <laughs> well, if your hobby is cooking and you keep cooking these weird recipes, who eats them? My husband, Pierre. And what is Pierre's hobby? Taking bicarbonate. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Bring this to the last caddy in, in the alley. I wonder what will happen here. <laughs> Greetings all from the King of Ode. Falstaff's here with his weekly load. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Falstaff. 
What new poems are you toting tonight? Have you heard the toast of the Bronx is Mrs. Malone? She plays Ailey Ailey on her slide trombone. <laughs> no. Or uh, the kangaroo's pouch was stretched too far when a cop jumped in and said, follow that car. <laughs> tonight we're simply discussing hobbies. Why am I here? Precisely. I have. I know. I know. I know. I know what you have. What is your poem called? Hobbies. How does it go? Hobbies are the current rage, the vogue among all classes. Millionaires have hobbies, likewise the lowly masses. Stamp collections, mustache cups, autographs and string, buttons, ships in bottles, and records sung by Bing. My so-called hobbies are unorthodox. I collect odd items, rare. Old racing forms, cigar butts I acquire here and there. A dirty wad of chewing gum, a discarded crust of bread, stubs of opera tickets, an orchid long since dead. My collecting isn't a hobby, you connoisseurs may say. You're right. Collecting is my profession. I'm a street cleaner on Broadway. We turn to our city choir, the five DeMarco sisters, accompanied by Al Goodman and his refugee revelers. The, the DeMarco sing, You Won't Be Satisfied. <laughs> was a jigger of two uh, of Oh, What It Seemed to Be, played by Maestro Al Goodman and his Bronx Bobcats. Someday I won't get here in time. The music gets shorter and shorter. Say, Portland. Yes? Did your mother like the birthday present I sent her? You know, Mr. Goodman's album of uh, familiar waltzes. Well, what are the records this cracked? Really? Which one? The Blue Danube. Did she play it? Yes. Mama said the Blue Danube sounded like Flushing Bay. <laughs> Fine. You could use that other now, right? Uh, get this now. Fine. You could use that right here, too. Do you think you could exchange the record? Not I. If your mother wants to return that record, she can do it herself. I had enough trouble in that music shop. What happened? Well, the other afternoon, I started out to buy Mr. Goodman's album for your mother. I was walking down Broadway. I finally came to a music store called Jukebox Heaven. A little plaque in the window said, Carmen Lombardo slept here. <laughs> As I opened the door, I heard a salesman arguing with a customer. The salesman said... I'm sorry, sir. I never heard of that song. None of your blooming lip, you busted bounder. I'll have you sacked. Where's the manager? Manager? Arthur Treacher. Arthur, whatever is the trouble? Why, this obnoxious flunk here refuses to sell me a record. Manager? Now, shh. Stop yelling, Arthur. What song do you want? Well, it's called Permitted to Precipitate. Permitted to Precipitate. Oh, clerk, bring Mr. Treacher Let It Snow. Yes. <laughs> Have you heard some of our others? Have you heard Hammerstein and Rogers' masterpiece? It might as well be spring. Uh, the lyrics are positively silly. Silly? Now, that line, I'm as busy as a spider spinning daydream. Well? A spider spinning daydream? Have you ever seen what comes out of a spider? It looks like a lot of dirty dental floss. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> and, that, uh, and that other line. 
I feel so gay in a melancholy way. <laughs> ah, well, it's definitely paradoxical. It is emotionally impossible to feel gay in a melancholy way. Oh, I know what you mean. It's like a mortician smiling. <laughs> gay in a melancholy way. Well, look, uh, Arthur, uh, if you don't like our American but songs... Fred, Fred, I want to take some new American numbers back to England with me. Haven't you something else London has never heard that I can take back? Say, uh, how about hillbilly music, Arthur? Now, London might be a uh, go for hillbillies. You mean those rustic blighters who walk around with no bottoms on their fats? Would you? <laughs> Would you like to try a hillbilly roll? I say that might be jolly. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the premier performance of Great Britain's first hillbilly star, Elma Treacher in a stirring rural drama entitled, Since He Grew Too Tall for the Family Trailer, Mammy's Little Baby Needs Shortening, Shortening. <laughs> Music, maestro. Breakfast ready, Zeke. Come and get it. Eh, uh, eh, uh, what's for chow, Ma? Owl eggs and possum jowl, Paul. Owl eggs again. Yeah, I'll get my teeth and be right with you, Ma. Howdy, Pa! Howdy, Paul! Howdy, howdy, son. Son, was there any letter at the post office this morning? Want nothing, Paul. Ah, uh, con, son, the major. Why don't he write? Pa, it's ten years since you was with that Major Bowles unit. Ma, <laughs> oh, the last words the major said when the unit broke up in the basement of that Turkish bath at Little Rock. Zeke, the major says, when I want you again, I'll send the word. I'll be ziggity dig dog. <laughs> when the major sends the word, Paul, can I go with you? Ah, uh, you keep practicing your tissue paper and comb, son, and I'll take you. Take you along. Fetch you with me. If you take an Elmer to the city, Paul, reckon it's time you had a little talk with him. Think so? About the... <laughs> About the bees and flowers? Ah, uh, I can tell a bee from a flower, Paul. <laughs> a flower don't sting you. Uh, how old are you, son? Well, I've been keeping count, Paul. I'll figure it out. Good, Elma. Now you get to figure it. All my fingers. That's ten. All my toes. Twenty. All my fingers again. Thirty. The toes on my right foot. That's, uh, thirty-five. <laughs> And this year, I'm up to the big toe on the left foot. You're 36, son. Elmer, it's time you know about women. Women? Yahoo! Yes, son, Elmer, Yahoo! Elmer. Son, come down off that wall. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, uh, Jeepers, it's time he knowed, Ma. Hand me the Sears Roebuck catalog, will you, Ma? Uh, now, where's that uh, female bell brigand section? Uh, here it is. Uh, now, Elmer. Here, Pa. There's two kinds of humans. Pants wearing uns and skirt wearing uns. Here, Pa. The skirt wearing uns is the women. Oh, poor. <laughs> now, here, Ma. Put the catalog back. The boy ain't ready yet. <laughs> Buzz on his lip fooled me. Elmer never learned nothing around here, Paul. Let's get up and go to the city. Oh, I ain't budging till the major sends the word. You could have sold his shanty to that man that come round last week. He sure was anxious. Yeah, I said this was last place in the country he had left. We ought to go, Paul. The land's poor. Cows are so weak, they got to lean against the barn to move. Jeep, jeep, ah, what's that shooting? Ah, the double ding dong boys, the Joneses again. Well, fake my deal and call me Hezekiah. I thought we killed all them Joneses. A new batch of Joneses come yesterday, Paul. They're starting up the field again. Oh, dang, dude, it. There goes our picture of Senator Claghorn, Ma. <laughs> Folks, grab your guns and start. <laughs> your fire. We got him. We wiped out them Joneses again. Let's pack up, Paul, and get. More. We're musicians. We ain't a leaving till the major sends the word. Oh, oh. What's up, Elmer? Boy, one of them our Joneses are coming across the creek. He's waving a white flag. Open the door, Elmer. Keep your distance, you vomit Jones. Don't 
This is your grand finale, how to do and climax, Jones. Don't put the desert to me, Zeke. Say, hey, you're a new Jones, ain't you? I just come back. Yeah. I was the little Jones runt that run away with the washboard 20 years ago. You ain't little no-count shirt tail Spike. Spike Jones. Yeah? You just killed off my whole band. I need musicianers. I heard you was musical family. Major Bowles told me. Ma, the major sent the word. <laughs> Elma, get out your comb. Ma, start lipping your jug. The good old major has put me with the only Major Bowles unit left, the Spike Jones Band. How about a song, Zeke? Let her rip, Spike. <laughs> Listen to my story. I just come down from the hill. I went there to find my childhood sweetheart, but she's gone her voice forever still. Only cut down the old pine tree, and they hold it away to me. To make a coffin of pine for the sweetheart of mine. Only cut down the old pine tree. This has been the Fred Allen Show with Fred's guest, Arthur Treacher. And now, as a special after show for our Armed Forces listeners, the five DeMarco sisters gather around the microphone to bring you a few of the songs you have requested them to sing. Time's up. The five DeMarco sisters have been entertaining us with a group of songs they've been requested to sing for our overseas troops. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service. Open your mind.